There you go. Now, we've got another clip of him behind the scenes basically uh, telling Obama and Banner that they've served them well, but then just giving them a little message about uh, who ultimately is in charge. We're going to play uh, that clip here in just a moment. Uh, do we have that exclusive clip, guys? We're going to get you that exclusive clip uh, here in a moment. But first, I want to go back to David Knight uh, and Jakari Jackson. Uh, David, getting a little more serious here. I try to put a good face on this and just try to be a little bit nasty about it to have some fun, but this is truly sickening. When I put out that report yesterday that's gone viral, Pope's climate plan will kill a billion people if implemented. I mean, we're talking about shutting people's power off, shutting their water off, taking everything away from them. They're not even hiding this. This will kill a billion people, a lot of them Catholics. Uh, and to see... Because I could never criticize the Catholic Church before, even though a lot of my, most of my family that founded Texas was like just radical Protestants, foaming at the mouth anti-Catholic. Uh, I wasn't brought up like that. A lot of Catholic friends. Uh, I thought the fruits of something of the popes criticizing uh, communism, criticizing tyranny, criticizing abortion, uh, promoting the family. I just said, hey, I can't, I can't criticize this. Uh, now, though, I got to tell you, I mean, you talk about Book of Revelations. This guy is scary promoting the things he's pushing. Uh, the first thing he said when he got in a few years ago was Catholics obsessed on abortion too much. Well, you know, Catholics are pro-life, and you're not a Catholic, Francis. And he gets off the plane and says, you know, you're not wearing ruby slippers. Well, I'm the anti-pope. I mean, I remember seeing that yesterday. These are chilling statements to tell everybody that it, we may have had some problems with the previous groups in the Catholic Church or factions, but, man, the, the New World Order's got a big ally now with a billion people that follow this guy. And this guy supposedly speaks for Christ. Well, if this guy speaks for Christ, I, you know, this isn't the Christ I know, David Knight. David Knight for Infowars.com. Yes, you're right, Alex. I was watching Fox News going back and forth between them and CNN last night. I saw Greta Van Susteren saying, you know, it's amazing. Some people are saying that this Pope is different. Is he really different? Is he political? And of course, her answer was no, Alex. It's pretty obvious to anyone who's looking at this, Catholic or not, there's a world of difference between John Paul II and between uh, Pope Francis. There's a world of difference. He's all about uh, leftist causes. He's not really talking. He, he tries to say that's a moral issue and tie it together. And, you know, I found it interesting, Alex, that uh, she had Rick Santorum on to sell that narrative that there really isn't any difference between this pope and the other popes. This is an agenda. It's as carefully laid out as all the travel and security plans that we see here in Washington. And uh, it, this is an agenda they're taking a step by step. It began with his encyclical. He's been taking the lead and turning over a, a world global governance using climate change narrative. And of course, everything that he's talking about is really about socialism, about redistribution of income, about erasing borders. And the thing that underpins all of this is the climate change, because you can't have a world government without having some justification for regulation and for taxation at a global level. That's what this is about. And he's going to go to the U.N. tomorrow in New York. There's going to be leaders from 80 different countries. The entire U.N. is going to be there as well. Uh, it's going to be a perfect storm of uh, security mess uh, there. But, of course, you can't kick off world government without having all the leaders there. So that's what they're really doing about this. This is and it. I, I just, this is the kickoff, getting it all lined up for the global tax They've got the global government, the global courts, the global army, the global regulations, the, the global corporate minions, the global education systems, UNESCO. The final cog is global taxation and tracking all human activity and making carbon, which is the basis of life, carbon-based life form, a crime, making life a crime that can be taxed, destroyed. Uh, but we can't go any further without playing a clip of what, uh, again, Pope Francis had to say about this initiative today. Here it is. Once more, the Sith will rule the galaxy. And we shall have peace. And part of the fairness doctrine, I believe that we really should occasionally have a comment from Pope Francis here, there, actually, it looks just like Ratzinger, the previous pope. Uh, sorry, David Knight, please continue. Well, Alex, I was going to say that that excellent report that Rob Dew had about the uh, young child who, we're told, 
climbed through the metal barriers, got through all the barricades, presented this, this letter to the Pope that was incredibly precocious. This child is a genius and a master escape artist. Uh, but listen, at the core of this, Alex, we need to read what this group is doing that, that uh, put her up to this and got her through. You know, she didn't just show up there like we're told all the kids are coming across thousands of miles of Central and South America, presenting themselves at the border, and Glenn Beck meets them there with uh, teddy bears. This child had a, a letter about DAPA, Deferred Action for Parents. Understand that when you have the mainstream media like Fox and CNN pushing back and saying to Donald Trump, there's no such thing as anchor babies. And besides, if there were, it's in the Constitution. That's a total lie. They're talking about deferred action for children. And of course, they define children as people up to the age of 31. But this is deferred action for parents. This child uh, that was there yesterday that gave him the letter, she is, uh, was born in America. So that they say, well, she's an American citizen. She's an anchor her, baby. Please yeah. don't send my parents away. Don't send her parents And, and look, I'm going to say it. What do people that prey on children use? They use ice cream trucks. They use candy trucks. They use other children. They use puppies. The globalists are using this little girl, in my view, uh, as an allegory, just like predators would use another child to get the kids in the truck. And the American people are very childlike, and they're going, look, a child, a child. We're nice. Work with us. Yes, absolutely. And if you look at the bottom of this, when people say that you can't stop the anchor babies, yes, you can the Deferred Action for Children, the Deferred Action for Parents, those are both executive orders. Just undo them, first of all. The other part of this is that the basis on which we're extending citizenship to children who are born in this country is not even a Supreme Court decision that had anything to do with people who are here illegally. And it goes back to a Chinese decision. We need to remember that, sh that the Supreme Court is just an opinion, and it, their decisions are overturned all the time, even by other Supreme Courts. We had at one point in time a, a Supreme Court decision when movies first came out said they weren't subject to First Amendment protection. That was uh, about 1917. Then later in the 1950s, they overturned that decision and said, no, they are subject to First Amendment protection. That's just an opinion. We can read what the Constitution says. We can read what was done at the time. We know that that was not set up to create an anchor baby situation. But we have these executive orders, and those could be wiped away as soon as we got rid of Obama, if we had a president with the will to do it. But this is all about, as you just pointed out, it's all about using the children as a beard. If I'd sum up all of what was being said today, I'd say that uh, they're telling us that the, the earth is melting. And of course, women, children, and people of color are the ones who are hardest hit. That's, that's essentially the narrative that they're selling us. That's the way they're going to sell us global governance. They want to get our pity, appeal to our humanity, but then sell us an agenda that is absolutely anti-humanity. We're standing here in front of the founder of homeopathy. His name is Hahnemann. I didn't know it until we looked it up. And of course, here's his uh, slogan here, like cheers like in Latin. And then over here on the other side, we have a, uh, another Latin symbol, uh, an omnibus caritas, which means in all things charity. In other words, tolerance for people's informed consent when it comes to medicine. Have you heard any of that? Have you heard them talking about the issues of, if they're, if they're concerned about health issues and environmental issues, what about the dumping of chemicals into our water, like fluoride without our consent or without our knowledge? How about demanding that they inject mercury into our blood vessels or anything that they choose because the corporations or whatever that they put into our, our food, we're not allowed to know what that is. Of course, they're not going to talk about those kind of agendas because those are the health issues that are being sold by the globalist, elitist, fascist corporations that this Congress and this pope are really serving. And that's the, those are the people who are driving this globalist agenda. He's here to put a uh, Christian faith, uh, face on it to put a uh, moral face oh, on Oh, it shows. It's a full, full yeah. court press. I know you got to catch your plane. Great job, David Knight. We'll be talking to you more uh, tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. And again, they're having live reports on the street, recorded reports, special reports, the nightly news. You'll see all their coverage of the Pope trying to put the final nails in this republic's coffin at Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and, of course, Prison Planet. Dot TV on the nightly news, 7 o'clock Central, weeknights. I, of course, will be back, Lord willing, tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We've still got two hours ahead of us, three hours ahead of us. And then I'll be back this Sunday hosting, David Knight hosted last Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central with the Sunday transmission. But it is extremely cold-blooded to take this sweet little girl
who probably believes in Santa Claus and probably believes in My Little Pony and leprechauns and Easter bunnies because I've got a daughter basically this age. There's nothing sweeter than a little six, seven, eight-year-old girl. This is a five-year-old girl handing a letter to the Pope pleading for her family to be able to stay in the United States. They've been allowed to. And a yellow T-shirt with a pro-immigration message. And then it shows, oh, her parents, the Border Patrol's all around guarding the Pope. They're not there grabbing any of the illegals. No one's hunting these people down comparatively to any other nation. They're, they're getting rid of the borders entirely. And then meanwhile, the Pope in his speeches says we're hurting the third world populations with our carbon. You notice in the Copenhagen Treaty six years ago, they kept it secret, but it leaked. They were trying to ram it through. And in the Copenhagen Treaty, it almost doubled, one percentage point from doubling, the amount of taxes on the third world that would be on the developed world. And actually, it's to stop the third world from developing and getting clean technologies. It was to stop them from coming out of squalor. It is a death sentence. And so let's put the little girl back on screen here because I want to show people something. If the Pope is to have his way, You would see millions and millions a year of little girls, it's mainly children that starve to death, dying. Dying, becoming skulls, becoming death. It's just sick. Draw a better skull than that. I mean, that's what this comes down to. I mean, he might as well in this image be the Grim Reaper. You know, getting ready to lop her head off. And that's why I get so angry. Is that that might as well be a sword coming out of his arm just to slice her head off. But they'll use her to push the image that he's this great guy. And that, oh, he's there to reform and stop the pedophilia. When the globalists use pedophilia in the Catholic Church to blackmail it and take control of it by any yardstick and Leo Zagami is going to be joining us in the second hour, the consummate Vatican insider whistleblower. At 8 after, we'll play a clip of the mini documentary we shot in Rome with him. And then we'll go to Leo Zagami joining us from outside Rome to go over all of this. But we know what we're talking about. There's a formula the enemy runs. I know you know that. We've got to educate others. I told you two weeks ago, they say it's 10,000 Immigrants a year, refugees, it's going to be hundreds of thousands by next week. Now it's 300 plus thousand. It'll be a million by next month. We told you it's going to end up being BMW next, and then it's going to be Japanese cars and American cars fixing the emission standards. Now that's coming out today. I know what I'm talking about. Because these are combines, organized crime syndicates. They don't do something unless they've been in council meetings with government in joint government, corporate governance. And they make the decisions to go ahead with this. Then it's whistleblowers inside government corporations that end up exposing it. Like the whistleblower that leaked the info on VW, like the whistleblower that they call a traitor in Congress, Snowden. He's not a traitor, he's a hero. And Donald Trump is wrong when he says he's a traitor and should, should be executed. The people illegally spying on us are the ones that should be in trouble, not the heroes that expose it. But you know, when freedom fails, the best men rot in filthy jails, and those that cry to peace, appease are hung by those they tried to please. Before we end this hour, please do not forget we're listeners supported. We had the money bomb. It was very successful, but that was to fund the satellite, the closed captioning, a few new reporters, crew members. We've already hired two new people. Thank you so much for the support. We have the ongoing budget to pay for everything. So when you buy the water filters, the books, the films, the T-shirts, the Hillary for Prison limited edition shirt, or DNA Force 20% off, Brain Force 20% off right now. Survival Shield Nason I on X2 set to sell out. When you purchase nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com, that makes this broadcast possible. We have the lowest prices ever on My Patriot Supply Foods, the lowest they've ever offered as InfoWars Select, InfoWarsSelect.com. So shop with the good guys, 